Coming to you all the way live from a little place somewhere in Cali. The Fighter's Voice. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Rich Ortiz, your host of The Fighter's Voice, along with my man here. What's going on? Shelly Hollis, co-host. You guys know what's the deal. Hey, we're here at Alamon's Boxing Gym, Fresno, California. Uh, no introduction needed here. As you can see for yourself, they look like clones. They look just alike, but they're different personalities. Macho and, time. Yes, exactly. Macho Enough time. Said. We have with us son of a legend, Hector Camacho Jr. Welcome to the show, Hector. Macho time. Thumbs up for Richie. All day long. Yes, sir. Fresno, California, man. It, it's, yeah. it's like your second home. Talk to us about it. This is my stop when it comes down. You know, when, I, when I'm away from home, I come to Fresno. I visit my, my good friend, Alex Diaz. Who's working hard with his kitchen app and come out here to when I start training, I can't stop here first. I was come to Fresno to get on my diet, get my weight down, and then I had to camp. Um, but it's like it's my second home, man. You know, I come here and it's a boxing town, a lot of love here. And I meet people like yourself who, who's <laughs> who's top of the line when it comes to boxing. Hey man, we do our best, man. But uh, we try to hold it down in Fresno, and uh, you know, Shelly tell you himself too. Um, you know, we're also uh, representing in Rock and Stockton as well. And uh, Shelly tell you firsthand, we, we got some uh, contenders, and uh, you got some pretenders, but um, you got some amateurs, and you got some world champions in no, Stockton. I mean, the Valley definitely, man. A lot of talent here from man, from all types of sports: baseball, basketball. Yeah, boxing, you, yeah, everything, you, you everything. name it. What you what you see is the difference, though, man. You come, uh, you know, you NY kid. You know what I'm saying? When you coming from the East Coast, you coming to the West Coast, what's the biggest difference for you? When it comes to boxing? Yep. I could say right now the West is more passionate about boxing than it was on the East Coast. Okay. Before, when it comes to big fights in Mass Square, Garden, Atlantic City, the West took over. Um, when did you, when did you see that change? Mexican fighters. Okay, that's what I'm over. saying. So when did you see that change? Because you're you know, you Spanish sure, Harlem. So. After China beat my father? <laughs> real, okay, real after shit. After that, Mexico was on top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got so, you. So speaking that right now, like, uh, you know, shit, Puerto Rican fighters, man, uh, this mm-hmm. weekend is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, you got some guys coming up. You know what I mean? Like, everybody always debates that. Like, what do you see the difference between Puerto Rican fighters and Mexican fighters? Oh, man, you know, it, it's, it's, it's basically the same. But when it comes to style, that's the difference. And we both hot blooded. We both, you know, to beat us, to beat us, you gotta really beat us. You know, same thing Mexican. We don't give up. Like just the Mexican. They they fight, they fight. So that's something we got in Latino blood that doesn't change. But the style wise, you know, Mexican are slower starters. Puerto Ricans are more boxers, typical hands up, side to side movement. Um Hey, but the recent wave of new Mexican fighters, Canelo. It's a bunch of them. You know, start with right. Canelo. They fighting style has <clears throat> changed. They have bet themselves off. They 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 right. more of a boxing style than what before. More of a slugger. Now they thinking more. They coming prepared. You see, even their body looking different. True. Back in the yeah. day, you see Mexican fighters. You didn't see that much muscle. You seen a lot of heart, a lot of heart. You know, a lot of condition. But now you see fighters in shape and right, right. Yeah, there's, there's a difference now. They step up the game. You know what I want to add on, on that, Hector, also, since we're talking about the Carnello. Um, you, you're basically, uh, Mexicano fighters, they, they use uh, the ropes in, in the corner. The new uh, breed of Mexicanos, I mean, they use the entire ring now. Yes. Uh, is that safe to say from your experience and, and realizing as you see the transition in the fighters from yesterday to today? Yeah, big time, man. They smartening up, you know. Um, in Puerto Rico, I think it's something about the, the, the old school trainers are no more there. The younger guys now. Okay. Yeah. And now when they, the young fighters teach people like Mayweather style, the, the, the handwork, the payment, the power work, everything is different. Right. Compared to what it was old school days. In Mexican, they still, Mexican is still with the old school ways of doing things. They're just <laughs> smart up little things. There's an Olympian fighter for us so longer. He beat Jason Velez. What's his name? Uh, Where from here? The Mexican kid. Yeah, Olympian. Oh, uh, Richard Torres, heavyweight? No, another one. It was a 126 pounder. He um, beat, um Jason Velez, not so long ago, the Olympian kid. I think he's working with Canelo's people too. Oh, 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 oh! You're talking about uh, uh you talking Ortega? No, nah, no. Nah. Well, What's we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find name? out our research team. The new one coming up. Um, he's Olympian. But did you say Valdez? Yeah, Valdez. Frank Alamon breaking the third wall with Valdez. Valdez. Yeah, yeah. You see his it's style? A walk encyclopedia. That's a well, You want to ask all the, right, all, all right. the big fights, amateur fights here too. I mean, just, you know, don't go to Google, go to uh, Frank yeah. Alamon. Frank, Frank picked it up fast. Oh, he did. Those are the new type of Mexican fights you see there that could do it all. Boxing, exactly. Fighting. Exactly. Exactly. Man. That's but no, it. you're absolutely right. Frank. So, like, environment, man. You go to gyms, hmm. East Coast, West Coast. Like, what's the environment in a gym if you out in Philly, if you're out in NY? What's the environment like? It's always love, it's always good. Unfortunately for me, I'm a Camacho. 
they want to take my head off. Every gym I go, they want yeah, let me spar. So, so that so that name is heavy. That name is heavy, man. There's a lot of love <laughs> in the East Coast and West Coast as well, but you know, I'm always a target when it comes down to that. Yeah, and I embrace it. You know, it makes only make me better. But um, the difference is, like I said, is passion, man. In the West Coast, like you know. They they want to get up there, man. East Coast like boxing has slowed down, man. Slow down big time. I'm gonna throw a name out there and uh, Theofimo Lopez. What's your whole take on that? Oh, and man. and how do you think he's gonna uh, adapt now that he w- he wants to move up to the bigger boys? And we look at it as only a five pound difference, but in, but in boxing, when you got zero percent body fat, uh, five pounds is five pounds. See those kind of fighters like Theofimo. He reminds me of what you call like a Pat Mahomes. What? Yeah, Pat just signed a big contract. Yeah, yeah. Right. you see that boy busting his chops every game, right. taking risk. Yeah. I see the same kind of passion through as with with, with Telefimo. Okay, I mean he's on top. He just be Lomo. He's not gonna let yeah. go. He's gonna keep no. working hard. Right, so no. those are the kind of fight that stay on top. I think he'll be there for a while. Not only because his boxing skills. Um, the kid's a pretty smart fighter. He's a pretty smart kid. You know, he's passionate. He knows what it takes to market himself. You know how to get the fans to love him. I mean, he he's in his zone right now. And then you see, I mean, for you, if you say anything about somebody uh, knowing how to market himself, you had a firsthand experience watching your pops. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think it get no better. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so important. You got to put butts in the seats. Do you? That's okay. Seeing that, I was talking to Richard about that before we got up here. Man, I was in the car. I was like, I can see where Mayweather, certain people got that flamboyance from. You know what I'm saying? When I see your dad come out in the ring in his older fights, and then you see dude like you don't. That ring walk shit, that was his thing. Yeah, Pops ba- basically mastered that. You know, he he revel- he changed the boxing game with that. People more like going to his fight to see what, how Macho Man coming out with the next fight, how he's dressed. It wasn't right. no more, let me see him fight, he's going to win. They wanted to see how he's dressed. What's he wearing? Why he's wearing. <laughs> That's what it was. It was Who a show. It? it was an event. See, for people that don't know him, how much how much was show and how much was hard work? Was that did no, that, that shit? was him. That was I him. Mean, he worked hard enough because you know he had a show coming up. Right. So he, he worked hard just performing the shows. So okay. he was scared to lose. He didn't want to look back. I mean, you come in the ring as a, as as a, as an Indian, you don't want to get your butt beat. You know, nah. you want to make sure you're on point. Okay, so he Real trained shit. he trained extra hard for that. Okay, because he wanted to prove himself. Right, so y'all coming in flash, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna back it up. Right, because you see now, like you know, you can even say throw in like the McGregor's and shit like that. Everybody has that. They want to be that flashy, yeah. but sometimes they do that and then they don't come. Or for instance, the biggest one we just seen right recently was Wilder. Right, Wilder came in with the interest, yeah. and then they want to use the outfit and shit like that. But when I go back and watch your pops, mm-hmm. it was always something. You know, pops, it, it was like a natural fit for him. He wasn't trying. And I give a good example. Floyd Mayweather, he fought Gaddy. He wanted to start a ring in, in a moment, in a moment chair. Right, so like my father did yeah. against um. Sugar Ray Leonard. It didn't look good on Floyd. I mean, yeah. it looked like, okay, he trying. Yeah. The Macho Man was natural. That was just his fit. Okay. You know? Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't know, and, and not only did Floyd do it, but uh, also Tank Davis do it. did it. If you're going to wear a sombrero, wear it straight. Because don't wear it backwards. So do your research on, <laughs> on the main Connell's hats. I just thought I'd let you know, throw it in there. But uh, they performed, uh, you know, as as you know, uh, Mayweather performed against De La Hoya and Tank Davis, man. Human highlight reel on... Uh, Santa Cruz. You don't think it's a little different between those kind of fighters? They do it to upset the fans. My father did it. Could be purpose for love. Ah, I, you know, that was his show. He I got you. Upset the no, fans. and I see that, and yeah. I see that. Cause same thing with Mayweather. When money comes in, and he's wearing like the Hispanic colors in the Mexican. He's exactly. doing that to upset the yeah, fans. Upset the fans. Right. Man, oh, that, absolutely. That was just, um, but a little throwback from uh, his uncle Roger. Right. Uh, uh, was the original? Uh, I believe black it was the, the Mexican assassin. Yeah, the original Black Mamba, and they called him the Mexican respect, assassin. Man. Rest in peace to a legend. Yeah, still a legend. Yeah, right? man. Like he said, most of you don't know shit about boxing. <laughs> he tells the truth. Yeah, he does. It's one of the most famous quotes, man, and, and you can use it today because yes. um, no one's going to argue with you. Mm-hmm. You got those uh, Monday night uh, quarterbacks, you know, afterwards, should have, would have, and could have, but uh, shit. until they lace it up, man. Yep. Another another animal in another zone, you know? Exactly. And some fighters train their best, and time fight time comes around, and they just can't perform. Yeah. You got to have that it factor. I need to you. be on top. Yeah, exactly. When was it? When was your uh? I don't know, man. When was your first fight? Do you remember the yeah. very, the very fucking first time the bell rang? Do you remember it? My first fight, amateur fight. Pro, my first pro fight Let's was go. some Tuesday night fights. I fought on TV. Did my pro debut. I you fought a guy called network. Rocky Martinez. At eight wins, three losses. I would do my debut. My father fought the main event in the USA, double header. So it, it, Sean O'Grady, it, right? It, yeah, it was directing, man. At the same time, I was anxious. I wanted to fight, but at the same time, I worried about my father fighting as well. Okay. You know? oh, he was wow. getting up in age, so yeah. it was kind of, you know, it was bugged out, man. Were you, were, you guys in the same, were you guys in the same camp then? Same, same camp, same dressing room. He was driving me nuts, man. He was driving me nuts. Hey, don't lose tonight. You're on TV. Like, you know, he kept on telling me, you're on TV. I look good tonight. Don't lose tonight. You're on TV. So, you know, it was just getting to me, you know. But yeah. it's part of that's who he is and 
Hey. So what was your what was your what was your, how'd you walk out then? I mean, you a Camacho, so where'd you come yeah, out to that day? He forced me to wear those kind of boxing trunks that he wear. I didn't want to wear those. I wanted to come out simple. No, you wearing this tonight? Oh, I don't want to wear that. Pops, you gonna wear that? So you know, it it was fun. You know, it it, it was fun. It was funny. Same time, nerve wracking. You know, but hey, I'm a Camacho. That's what I do. And it's funny you say that because that was one of the questions. I just didn't have time to address it on uh, on last night's show. So if you didn't catch last night's show, make sure you go to the Fighters Voice www.youtube.com slash the Fighters Voice. Every fighter has a voice, and so do you. So a little plug in for our own show as a, uh, you know, we continue to. Um, Open up doors with the fighter's voice, man. Now now taking over the 209. Taking over Stockton, and it will, soon we're going to be taking over uh, Sacktown, Sacramento. With having guests like you, uh, gives us the opportunity to not only excel um, for the fighter's career, but also for the viewers, the followers, and the fans. And there's something I want to add right now. I mean, we talked about, I was looking at a poster with uh, Camacho there, Shelly, and uh, it was of Jesse James Leha, one of Camacho's toughest fights, mm -hmm. who um, that fight really, really tested uh, Hector. And I pointed at him just just to see if I can get a smile or a chuckle out of him. And, and Hector turned around and said, oh, yeah, we're, we're friends. Uh, we talk on a daily basis. Uh, we communicate a lot. Yeah. When did that friendship start from from wanting to take each other's head off? Was it years or was it immediately? You know, when you had the fight, we was cool with each other. Like, we understand this is business. I mean, I was young. I was 20 years old. Leha was a veteran. But, you know, I got my father's shadow. So I, I knew what it was to be, you know what I'm saying, in the limelight. So. To me, I, I looked at it as respect. You know, after the fight, before the fight, you know, this is it's just a fight. After this, hey, it's yeah. a legend. Just a great fight. But ever since that fight, ever since, you know, when the fight ended, due to the cut, Jesse told me, you have to live with that, Camacho. You have to live with that decision in your life, not me. I'm 35 years old. Today's my birthday. But you have to live with that. You have to answer those questions while you pull out. And ever since that, you know, that, that really hit me in the heart. Yeah. And ever since that fight, I always kept in contact with Jesse. Hey, just let's do exhibition fight. Let's fight again. Come on, let's fight. Let's fight. Yeah. Even not so long ago, Tyson fought. I said, Jesse, see, they fight at 56. One more time, me and you. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I irk him. I, I, you know, see if I get a reaction from him. And we joke around. He played basketball. He watched San Antonio Spurs. Hey, let's play basketball. They do anything against each other. Let's there compete. You go. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, but we, 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 you know, it's out of respect and love, you know, as, a, as another fighter who, who led blood, sweat, and tea in the gym, you know, in the rings. And you have respect guy like this gym. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, exactly. And I should knocked him out, but he's, he's a legend. <laughs> and he had a share of legends as well that, oh, that yeah. he uh, was in the ring with. Yeah. After that fight, I, I know it, it didn't go uh, the way we wanted it to go yeah. on, on paper, but uh, what did you learn from that fight? What did you get out of that fight? You know, I um, how fast, and I should learn that from my father's career, how fast the media turns on you. Before that fight, I was the next Latino superstar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People were saying, would he become better than his father? He fight like his father. He got more punching power than his father. Wow. He might become better than his father. Yeah. And the next day after Leha fight, the New York City Post, the, the papers, yeah. big headline, coward. When I read that shit the next day, I said, you know what? Boxing's a mother. It and ever since that, man, that, that just like gave me a bad taste in boxing, man. I mean, it's a dirty business, a beautiful sport, but it's a dirty business. People don't see that side of it, but hey, dirty business. Okay, you talking to a younger guy in your same shoes and that shit happens to him. What do you want to tell him that no one told you? You know what I'm saying? When the media turned on you. Yeah, you just as good as your last fight. You just as good as your last fight. Turn it around, get back in the gym, and you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Straight you're up. Young. Run it. Let them talk. They're all going to talk about you. You're doing good, they're going to talk shit about you. When you're doing bad, they're going to talk shit, shit about, about you. you. Just do what you got to do. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it must be, you know, a cliche, but I mean, you know, it's, it's time to move on. It happens to everybody, you know, uh, yeah. mistakes. There's a friend of mine, I'm not putting him on blast or anything. Um, uh, Awesome ring announcer, mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah Gallegos. Um, he didn't announce the, um, he didn't uh, say the wrong name. He just said the wrong hometown. But once the fighter hears his hometown, he assumes yeah, that, he that he's the yeah. winner. And he corrected himself. Um, you know, they had fun with it on Twitter and social media. But at the end of the day, he's too talented to take it to heart. It's, you know, like in baseball, you, you got to have a short memory and, and you got to move on to the next. Yeah, that's the same thing in life. Like, like, like Isha, Jesus said, you know, forgive yeah. and forget. Keep going forward. There, there you Small go. New day. There you go. And, and I will say, um, yeah, he has that voice, and uh, you know that's behind us now. So yeah, I mean, people burn me after that. Oh, Camacho got paid eight hundred thousand. He quit. He took the money. He left. <laughs> hey, oh, okay. yeah. he's what you want to say? Yeah. Yeah. It's still Macho time. I got the I got the W. It's still Macho time. It's always Macho time, huh? Speaking of that, man, I wasn't around with you guys yesterday, dude, but I know a lot of viewers. I want you guys to know too, man. A very important films getting ready to drop on Showtime. I can't wait, Shelly. I can't wait either, man. I, Especially I sitting wait. next to you. Like, what for for me? Just what was it like sitting there watching that? Because you're watching your life too, not just your father's life. You know what I'm saying? You grew up seeing that. I haven't watched it yet. I don't think I'm gonna watch it for a while. 
I'm not ready for it emotionally. I'm not ready. Um, but I know what to expect. I was part of the you know, I'm part of the doc. I was consulting on the doc, so I pinpoint everything. You know, waiting to talk to, waiting to go, who to interview. So I was a big part of it, but. I prefer let the fans. This is for the not for me. It's for the fans. Yeah, that's good. It's for the boxing people. So right. I want you to enjoy it. <clears throat> I'll wait to have to fight and hear all the responses back, and that's what I'm here for. You know, it's not about me. It's about I me. got you. It's about his legacy. So if I'm not ready to watch it. Yeah, I'm just you know, you'll get a first hand. Who is Macho Camacho in the ring and outside the ring? Okay, you hear stories you never heard before. Right. You know, there's something you said yesterday, and it stuck with me. Um, the media, you know, they like to use in the shadows. Yeah. And and you corrected that real quick. He says shadows. You, you said I don't know anything about shadows. To me, it's a light. Yeah, it, it's a light that I follow. I, I'm not yes. anybody's shadows. Yeah. There's a light. And, um, and, and describe the meaning of that statement. Well, you know, I I stole that line from my friend Alex Diaz. He said, "Mano, what okay. shadow? You're exactly. the light. Exactly. And it made sense. Yeah, it made sense. Yeah, it's a blessing. You know, if you get caught up like, oh man, my father, like Trevor Junior. Oh, my father Chavez, you know, that's pressure alone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not here for that. I'm here to embrace it. That's a light. That's a blessing. If I was thinking about, I want, I want to become better than my father, then I, 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 I got big shoes to fill. But I'll go crazy. Yeah. You'll never be happy. Yeah. Because you can't compare yourself to what kind of fathers you have. Chavez, Camacho, those are fighters that come every 100 years. Those are legends. Yeah. Right. Fighters are born every day. Macho Camacho. Those kind of people isn't born every day. You know, they that's come right. every hundred years, sugar, then Ali. So, but somebody said, you're in the shadow. I ain't no shadow. That's a light, a beautiful light. Exactly. Right. I was about to say that was a beautiful statement. Yeah. So, no. It, Thanks for my man, it, Alex it Diaz, man, Kitchen App. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, well, what is that? What is Kitchen App, man? Well, you know, that's, he can explain it better. You know, I can explain it better. Okay, I just, gave, I, I, just, I just gave you an alley-oop right now, man. You know, I just gave that's that's you an alley-oop. That's, that's the new wave now. It for is the a new wave. Service. It is. I it mean, is. you know, nowadays the COVID just the way to go. Shelly, like, I gave LeBron an alley oop right here. You yeah, just yeah. get that and you got to slam dunk that. I man. know, I know, I know. But it's all good, you know, man. Uh, we'll talk good. about that on the next show because actually he's he's stepping up and uh, we want to do some, um, want to uh, collaborate and do something with uh, Frank Alamon's gym as well. And uh, yes. I know Alex wants to do something uh, with the Fighters Voice, both in, in the Fresno studio and the Stockton studio. So uh, yeah, we'll be uh, talking about that in, in the near future. And uh, because of Alex is why I'm sitting down with, with you here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know oh, that whole story, nice. and, and and how you uh, we came across, and, and when you you made it to the studio, and uh, you know the, the memories, and not only that, the relationships that we have, and what I told Alex, and I told a lot of people, I even told Shelly, what I was most surprised with, honestly, was your knowledge for the sport oh, of man. not just yesterday's fighters, but but today's fighters. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too up in boxing now, mm -hmm. like I was back in the days. Yeah. But when going back to my man Alex and those kind, of why I'm here, you know, another advice I'll give young fighters is. So why is for a good team? Yeah. Okay. Floyd Mayweather wasn't Floyd Mayweather until he got the money team around him. Remember, he was only sending out 2000 scene arenas right. in Las Vegas mm -hmm. on top rank shows. He didn't become that Floyd Money Mayweather until he got the money team. Yeah. Down him is in the, you know. So so why is for good people always? Mm -hmm. This is a tough sport, man. They'll suck you dry here. Okay. You're gonna have real people around here, hey, you doing you're doing this wrong. Oh, don't do this, man. You're doing this. You know, you lost. Yeah. And um, so why must I people like Alex, was people like Rich, you don't need to better yourself. Yeah. They all got to say, you're the smartest person in your circle, it's time for you to get in the circle. Yeah. Very true, very true. So, very true. I'm in a better circle now. <laughs> do you, do you, see that with a a lot, you see that with a lot of fighters, like they got a bunch of, bunch of yes men around them or people just supporting them while they're doing good? How do you feel? You know, we fighters, we love our ego touched up. We love to hear, hey, you're the best. We love to hear that. Right. But that's necessarily the best thing, you know? So what happens, what happens to a fighter's mind the first time they get hit with controversy? Bam, that first L. What happens? I mean, it's tough because this life is so fast, man. You don't got time. You know, when you got time for it, you just think, oh, shit, what just happened? What just happened? Right. Life has happened so yeah. fast, especially nowadays. And more in the boxing world. I mean, life just happens so fast. You don't have time for nothing. Life when doesn't wait back, for you. You're like, wow, what happened? Well, shit, I just seen you. For you. I seen you right now. Before, you know, I think about your father's days as, as how he was. But like, mm. I'm watching you now. You're on Instagram. You get to tune in with your fans and stuff like that. Yeah. How much have social media changed boxing? Because you was around it before the shit yeah. even happened. I mean, I'm old school. I'm not much of a social media guy. I'm starting up now. But what I do understand is marketing. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I got a lot of things going on. And this documentary is a blessing because this will open other doors for me. Yeah. That's why I'm still in shape. I'm in the gym. That's why I'm here at Fresno. I'm on the food app, you know, eating my vegan meals and keep myself straight because after this documentary, it's doors different. will open. So I expect a good phone call after this, you know. 
who knows maybe golden Abs- boy absolutely right you know okay let, let's talk about that I, I had a little hook for that but uh do you have a message for golden boy do you have a message in in particular for anybody uh, um you know big names look for big names for fights and i haven't been active for a long time but this documentary prayers my name the big names because now macho camacho come back to light now that brand camacho is back everywhere you know yeah oh, come on, come on. So that opened my doors so my job to be ready when that call come i'm ready whether it be outside the ring inside the ring just be ready so speaking speaking of that uh your name's been brought up with um brandon bam bam reels yeah um if that fight does materialize and i've heard i've heard it from uh his uh, trainer himself from robert garcia he hey, said robert, he said make that it happen he, he said that make would be a happen. great fight to Kansas happen city make it happen those are one of the few states Kansas that, you city, know, that's right that's still open they're still free to move about. True. Let's make it happen. It's an interesting fight. You know, Camacho then back in there. Bam Bam come back. a tough fighter. Everybody know he's tough. Two good names in there. Show off a good fight. Why not? Yeah. Still macho time. Man, whoever else you got there? <laughs> it's still, yeah. anybody. It's, 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 it's still macho time. Hey, that'd be perfect right there, son. Uh, your, your father fought De La Hoya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, boxing oh, about storyline yeah. nowadays. Exactly. You know, that's what sells storyline yeah. names. Well, how, you did you, how did you feel about that event? Did you watch that last one with the what, uh, Thriller? I think I seen the hat over there. Did you guys watch that this weekend? Oh, the Tyson event? Oh, yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. You know, me as a fighter, I was basically looking at the fight. Now, who's going to win? Right. Just watching the styles, watching where the legends are at. Are they still be able to, 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 who will fight whose fight? Like, you know? So it was interesting in my, in, in my point of view, watching a fight. Like, wow, 50 something, those guys still looking good. Wow, Roy Jones, have, he still got speed. You know, it was interesting. I was looking for a winner. But I think it was good for two guys in the late 50s to go out there and do what they do. Yeah. They opened up for other fighters. I mean, the truth is, 90% of fighters, when they retire, they broke. Box a horrible sport. Yeah. So you gotta do something, you gotta keep relevant. You gotta stay relevant. What, what is it? What is it with that? Is it the lifestyle outside the ring? What is it? Is it the people around you, you know, that are getting paying? You most hear it a lot. of us come from nothing. We come from the bottom where right. it's hard already and no schools. And we raw. We, this is a poor man's sport, basically. And when you surround yourself with money people, smart people, business people, they're going to eat us alive. You know, I view the contract. So I'll tell you, young boys, yeah. man, go to school, study, man, know your math, man. Read your contract. Yeah, read contracts, man. Take business courses, you know, money courses, financial courses. Get yourself a part to what's going on in, you know, in the in the boxing world but it's tough man. we don't have it's no retirement nice. fund no 401k plan or health plan so most fighters after you spend 30 years of boxing we end up broke what we gotta do get a job i mean that's that's rough for us you know yeah with so much money boxes making i don't see why not we can't have a, a a retirement fund or life insurance or something so i'm coming back to boxing not only for myself but to help boxing okay. these are things that if i come a promoter i want to bring back to the game do you see? Okay, speaking, you know, you're talking. You're uh, you're already reaching for the future. Do you see yourself guiding and helping a lot of oh, yeah, young yeah. fighters? I do it now. You know, I get a <clears throat> phone call from fighters, and I you know I talk to them. I coach them. Mike, what you think? You know, I talk to them. Um, like I was born in boxing. I was really a student of the game. My father used to always call me, asking, "Yeah, what you think about this?" He's talking about boxing. I mean, I, I was I, I love boxing. You know, I used to watch my father and just study, study, study the way he is, his movements, everything, and. I know boxing to the team, you know, I know what boxers need. That's sort of why Canelo is where he's at. Sort of why De La Hoya got his promotion coming on top because De La Hoya was a former fighter. So he know what it takes to, he know what the fighters need. Right. He don't promote the brand, he promote the fighters. There's promoters that promote there. their branded promotion, they don't promote the fighters. So the big difference there. And in doing so, it's the harsh part of, of business. Harsh reality. And, uh, sometimes you, you got to ask yourself, man, do these, do these guys even have a heart? Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, you know, they, they, yeah, they they try not to get attached to their fighters. Cold but business. being a human being, man, I believe that that's one part of, of a human nature that you shouldn't shut down. Dirty business. You know, my father passed away. You think I got any phone call from Don King? Hey, you know what? You mean Don King made a lot of money with my father. I love yeah, Don. Yeah, I love yes, Don. Yes, yes, he did. You think any guys call me? Hey, come on, now. First off, your father. Your father made me millions. He has thirty thousand for the King, family. Carl Nobody King. has called me when the time come. So they 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 explode. They use us once you, once they can't use you no more. They throw it to the side. Next. That's the raw reality of boxing. I, you know what? I, I know it's tough, and you know I wanted to ask that because since you brought that up, who who did reach out, or 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 who forgot to reach out, and as if to say, hey, better late than never. You know, I, I've never told you, and I'm going to take this yeah. time to say, Camacho, my condolences. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You know, and and, and look, no, no, look, I I really mean it because I studied your fighter, time, yeah. and and I I watched your fighter, and on yesterday's show, I haven't exposed a 300 pound Richard Ortiz yeah, yeah. for yeah, to give that uh, some flavor because I said, you know what, I'm not going to use those pictures, but I said it's not about me, it's about this story that needs to be told. You know what, Rich? When I first came to Fresno, we sat down. That's the first thing you told me. Your father, man, I drove from where I yeah, live, California, yeah. all the way to Vegas to see you. I was a young kid. I don't know how I got hours. there. For four and that hours. made your life. That changed it, it, it you. It did. It did. Yeah. 
So that means it a did. lot to me. That's you telling me, I apologize for your father's death. My condolence. Yeah. That's yeah. the same thing. It's the same yeah. love. Yeah. Um, who called me? A lot of promoters called me, but did they react? Mike Aikie was one of them who said here. I mean, it's, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's what it is. Yeah, I, I can understand that too. Can't blame nobody. That's what yeah. it is. Well, I, I, I've been. Those I've who been cut me out don't, just don't know how to count. It's still macho time. <laughs> it's still yeah. macho time. I like that, man. So moving forward, you know, like you say, stand in shape. You being ready. Like, when do you want to get back in the ring? Um, I get in shape. You know, I I had, I had a history. A back, my second half of my career, not making weight. I didn't have that desire, that hunger no more. I didn't have a reason. So you know, my first goal in boxing was become known for myself. Right. Hector Camacho Jr. That's just the son of Camacho. Hey, that's, that's from small. I walk in the streets of New York. I just get stopped. Oh, you Camacho son? That's Camacho son. Take a picture. No? Yeah. I got tired of that Camacho son. I'm me. I'm Hector Luis Camacho Levo. I'm me. So I, I wanted to establish that when I came to boxing. You know what? These are big shoes to fill. I'm not even trying to go there. I'm going to be the best I could be. Right. And that's what I've done. You know what I mean? When I when I fought on HBO, my father was my undercard. That was my world championship fight. That was my <laughs> I made it. I remember that. That's dope, dude. Yeah, that I, was my I made it. You know, and I didn't have to do no more of the boxing. I got paid well because of the name, and I also performed as well. You know, so when that happened, I was thinking, okay, he's doing that so he can go in the corner and train. Uh, I mean, and uh, be in the corner for this fight. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it was done. Okay, but I but I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that, Shelly. That being his, his Super Bowl, so yeah. to speak. That's the macho man. He found a macho on the card. H put they want to buy him. They said, "No, we yeah. buy you, man." Even yeah, that's wow. Well, so what was your uh, what was your father's response when that huh? happened? I called him half. Hey, pal, listen, HBO said they want to buy me. No <laughs> shit. I'm the macho <laughs> man now. <laughs> Yo, what are you talking about? Well, listen, I got I got a fight for us, HBO. Right. They put me main event. You can find on the card and my uncle. That was the first time that father, son, and uncle formed the same show. Felix. Has anybody else done that? I don't know. No, no, because so. wait, no, 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 because no, 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 there's no, nobody else well, senior, junior. No, no, no. Only thing similar is uh, you had the exhibition of, of Chavez. The Chavez, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, right. That's different. Though. He's but not, but nothing but uh, professional the same flavor, I mean, and uh, I don't know, Frank. Has that ever happened before? <laughs> okay. Has any um, besides Hector Camacho's uh, son and father and uncle fighting on the same card? Any uh, relatives fighting all on the same card? Yeah, that's that's rare. That's rare, man. Yeah. special. Yes, it, it, it's all rare. And this totally was, was on Camacho. HBO's production. It HBO wasn't. It wasn't. Nation. Okay. Yeah. So you got the Camacho yeah. all together. You're gonna expect something. That that day, <clears throat> my father, my uncle had a fight in the cafeteria. My uncle got locked up for throwing dishes in the cafeteria, throwing plates. They locked him up. He got out that same day. For the fight. Performed better than anybody. Because yeah. he's already pissed I mean, off. It, it, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's just the Camacho, just who we are. Yeah. You know? So we had like kind of rumbling going on before the fight, and the day after the fight, the same thing happened. The hotel they had a big fight. That's well, those who are we brothers are. going at you it. You right? expect something when you hear the Camacho. You know, you expect some kind of show or something, whether it be negative, positive. Oh, that's too you many. Expect a, something. Too many in one room. Huh? and that's what people love. Then that's why they come out and see us. I'm Bill. a little different. I'm, I'm the more the, the calm level headed. Yeah. Dude, what's, what was it? What was it like for you guys in Puerto Rico, man? <laughs> Stepping out. You guys leaving NY. Oh, it was love, man. It was love. Puerto Rico, it, it's my island, man. You know, I love Puerto Rico. They love my father. They love us. I mean, we wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for the island. Yeah. For our people. I mean, Machu Camacho would be who he was. I mean, he'd always be who he was. Yeah. But he would be who he is, but for us, the, the, the fans, the people. Right. You know? So. I'm going to name some other names uh, in Puerto Rico. Of course, you, you got Refredo uh, Gomez and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Felix Trinidad, yeah. uh, Miguel Cotto. Yeah. How do they add up as far as the legacy of, of your father's legacy? I, I want you to step, and I know it's very hard to step out of the box of being his son and just sit down and, and acknowledge those names. And, and where do you put them? What part of, do you, how do you measure their success as compared to your father's success? I don't want to sound biased, but Macho Camacho is something totally different. Okay. From the traditional or the original Puerto Rican fighters. The Kodos, an excellent fighter, Trinidad, they were, they, they were killers. Yeah. But Macho had that it factor. Kodos did too, and Trinidad, they both had it. But he had that different it factor. Macho's yeah. name and brand all over the world, they know who he is. Yeah. And you just put a picture of the curl, they know who he is. You know? So he 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 stepped out. He was a little different from the traditional Puerto Rican fighters. He was brash, he was New Yorker, you know, he was, he was just. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, a little flash. Most Puerto Ricans are quiet, that little know, flash. take care of business, serious. No, Macho totally different. Totally different. I, I want to ask you this. And, uh, Even from his style. Because Puerto Rican fighters fight coming forward. Bouncing, yeah, 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 they do. Uh, I, I, Macho I, I, was totally different. 
totally different. I, I know they're tough. And I'll tell you about a story. I, I was at the MGM Grand, and um, I'm talking to a Puerto Rican fighter, and he was a sparring partner for uh, Azuma Nelson. So I asked him, I said, hey, during the sparring, do you ever tell him to hold back or anything? Or, and, and, and he got kind of, he goes, no. He goes, I'm Puerto Rican. We, we don't do that. Yeah. That's what he said. Absolutely. You know, I, I was new to the game. That's one of the questions I asked him, you know, off camera. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I, I would ask other fighters that were sparring partners for, um, oh gosh, who, who's a knockout artist at 154? Uh, Jillian Jackson. Ooh. I would talk to their sparring oh, partners. Oh, and he said, look, man, it's a job. We're just getting paid. And basically, you know, how hard the hawk would hit. Uh, my, my, my point is this. When did you know your, your father was going to, um, it, it was not just one championship, but it was going to be two. And then the legacy just started going. I mean, as a child, I know you remember, okay, dad won the, won the title. Everybody recognizes him. And then that wave never stopped. It never went from champion. Even though you lost, lost the title, Macho was bigger than the title. He didn't need to hold the bout to have that following. I mean, but he never came back down. Yeah. He stood there uh, constantly consistent. I don't think he ever lost the title. I think he just vacant the title. He won the won well, the, Hogan. They call that a no contest, oh, and yeah, they fought yeah, again. Yeah, you know that whole yeah. thing. And I, matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up, that while I brought it up. As far as the the apparel, when he came in, he gave back to um, yeah. those that the were war. fighting in the war. exactly exactly and and. and uh, you know, it, and the announcer said he had, he was going to come in as something else, but all of a sudden he changed it up, said, no, I want to give, it's not about me. I want to show what, what, uh, how I feel about those that are uh, losing their lives and risking their lives for everybody. Classy move, a classy move. We're talking about, Shelly, a Puerto Rican honoring the USA. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it takes a lot of balls and guts and um, just, a, you know, a walking hero to do that, man. Yeah, not only that, I, I say my father is the American dream. I mean, he came born in Puerto Rico. He moved to New York at the age of six. Didn't speak no English and made it to the White House to meet President Reagan. Reagan invited yeah. Macho Man over. Wow. He was that man. That, that's what I knew. You know? In 19, when I knew he was that, that guy, it was 1986, June 13, before everyone was at real. I went inside the ring at the middle of Flurry. He picked me up, the crowd went crazy. But ever since that night, that night, I knew Macho Man was the Macho Man. That's tough, tough fight he won. He hey, beat that's Rosario, but Rosario was Rosario. Um, that's it. He took off from there. That left hook took in the off. second round. Yeah, he took off. He yeah. proved he had balls. Yeah. Take shots. Yeah. Uh, a chin, too. Yeah. I mean, and when you see him, Shelly, I mean, the man, and we talk about Floyd Mayweather being able to take a punch. Hector's never been stopped. I right. don't remember even Hector really holding on for dear life. You know, he's caught a shot before, but we were talking about in some of the best chins in boxing, and you got to put Hector in there with with the top five in the world. Interesting you say that about Floyd Mayweather. People don't give him credit for that. No, they don't. His chin. No. His chin, because Mosley's caught him with some shit. Maidana caught him with some shit. Mosley hit him, and he went forward. He didn't go backwards. He yeah. went forward the whole fight. Yeah. And People then, don't mention about Floyd, about how great of a fighter he is. They talk about now that, you know, he dodges and he picks his opponent, but the earlier Floyd was a beast. Beast. Well, you know, he put himself in a position to do that. He's earned yeah, that he earned to, to, to pick and Point choose. Blank. And yeah. he's going to fight again in, in, in China. So he's earned it. Mm. You can't, so. I mean, you can't like that. You earned it. Exactly. I got one for you, Shelly, because I know you got a list of questions, but I got to drop this one on him. How does Hector Macho Camacho do today with social media, with Jeez. everybody on a cell phone, with, with everybody video? What brands does he hit? What does he do today? What doesn't he do? He'd be everywhere. He was ahead of his time. I can see you dropping a rap album, Shelly. Oh, I can see him doing everything. I see he him. He time. He did music with the. He did music with the with the Fat Boys. He was doing music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. saying. I was watching YouTube videos of him out in New York and shit like that. He just had it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was. He, had he, it. he was the rap before the rappers. He just had the ice chain. Yeah, no, no. no the, what I'm saying he had the. He had the. He, had he was the track that guy suit, before the rappers. Track suit and the everything. Track cars. The yeah, yeah. Lamborghinis. He was, he was that. That dude that the rappers now talk about. The chain, the ice. That was that dude you want in, in your video. Wow, man. Just, it, you know, it bugs out when you see him now. And I live this career, and I'm like, wow, he was ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time. They were nice that, you know, two in the morning, I wake up, couldn't sleep. I check in his room. He's up in two in the morning doing karate. He, he was bad boy. He's a, black, he's a black belt. You look at a macho man's black belt. Yeah, no yeah. shit. So he, yeah, he, that's why you know you see his form, his his position, everything was on we were, point. We were just talking. I was his talking about boots. it. I was talking about his feet. I was like, yeah. dude, because everybody talks about his feet. Black belt. And I was like, I was like, yeah, your dad was fast, <laughs> but I was like, the way he got in and out of shit so quick because of his feet. His feet movement was crazy. Yes. Yeah, mixed yes. it with those hands. Yeah. 
Dude, neutralize him. Yeah, like he did against Vinny Paziano. When that fight came up, I was thinking, okay, it's going to be a good fight. Vinny has fast hands. Yeah. He didn't look fast at all that night. Uh, Hector, I mean, he was just on point that night. And I remember uh, Vinny, uh, I said on last night's show, Vinny, when he went to his corner, he said, uh, Hector has fast hands tonight. Yeah. And, and one of the commentators said, tonight, said that as well. Yeah. yeah, he said fast tonight. tonight yeah. yeah, as if to say, okay. I didn't expect this. Yeah, we need right. a plan B. And they trained for that speed. <laughs> exactly. He didn't, he didn't they, speed they didn't, that fast. No, that yeah. was some, he was on tonight. He knew what he needed to do. He wasn't going to sit there and, and stand hit sure. and get yeah. hit by anything clean. When Macho Man was on his days, it was impossible to beat him. Almost impossible to beat him. He was on. It's like a Floyd Mayweather. When Floyd, much, if Floyd's on, he's on. You can't beat him. How much Oscar, of your dad was talent? Him. How much How much of your pops was raw talent and how much of it was his hard work? Well, he matched them both. He matches hard work with his talent. And that's why you got the one of the greatest fighters ever. Okay. He worked hard. He party hard, but he, hey, he worked hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He worked hard. Oh, yeah, he had good balance. Oh, great. I mean, he worked hard. <laughs> I mean, it was hard work. He used to love being in the gym two, three hours. He wanted to spar every day. Like, he loved boxing. It was difficult being him, right? I could say. I, I think so. He may look so easy, but it was difficult, you know? You know, something about my father that I never forget, and I, I will never, how humble he was. No matter where he's at. He, the same way they for a flight. Am I making a picture, Macho? He would stop. You know, fuck the flight. Like he, you know, he was that kind yeah. of person. Dope. Gave back to his uh, his yeah. his fans. Yeah. And that's something people don't say much. You know, nowadays, you know, people talk, oh, your father was great. Now they talk about it. But during his time, people never say that about him. Yeah, they hated him so much. They want him to lose so bad. You know, I want to see Macho get butt beat. Remember when I was small, I just go to the big fights, right? And I just go in the elevator. I ask random people, hey, who you like tonight? Camacho or Haugen? Um, I can't wait to see Macho get his ass beat. I hate that motherfucker. That's, oh, shit. That's my father. I never talked with Camacho Jr. But I asked random people around the hotel. Yeah. I was nervous. Who do you think going to win? Camacho or, or Haugen? I can't stand that motherfucker. That spick. I, I just get those. I just get those kind of comments. Yeah. Man, so. Dude, I think your dad Your dad was like the first one uh, that reached that level. Like you said, like with Mayweather, it's like your dad was so good that people only wanted to see him lose. Yeah. They got yeah. tired of that shit, you know? Yeah. But America does that, though. We build up giants and then we like to chop them down. Yes. All the time, we do it every time. And so, you know, in other countries, Canelo, it's a novelty. It if someone yeah. does good in another country, it's a novelty. Like they respect yeah. them, their legacy is cemented here. We like to build up the tower and then blow that shit up. You all know, the time. you got every Mexican fighter wanting to be the next Julio Cesar Chavez, whether this fighter openly admits it or not, or he may he may have. Uh, we got a fighter fighting this weekend, and usually you talked about the Puerto Rican fighters that they they come forward and, and they're very proud men. But if there's, uh, and I can't even say close, but if there's any other Puerto Rican fighter with Flash, that would be this weekend in, in Danny Swift Garcia because he doesn't fight like the norm Puerto Rican fighter. He has that little Flash. And I know somewhere down the line, whether he watched it or not, there, I mean, oh, Macho rubs off on people, not just Puerto Rican yeah. fighters. You know, you know, when I met Danny in Puerto Rico, he was fighting Mauricio Herrera, I think it was in Puerto Rico. I went to that fight. Mm -hmm. And I was coming out the taxi. I was coming out of my, my car, and Danny seen me. <clears throat> he said, "I read his lips." He said, "Oh shit, Camacho." I was walking. You know, I allowed my witness. I was walking. Was talking. Angel with him? His, his dad. Father, yeah, father talked for a good time. I mean, they Puerto Rican. They, you know, father's from Puerto Rican. They, yeah. Philly Rican. So, yeah. And then got a picture of my father in the, in the gym. So you know. That's right. That's that's that's. Hey, shout out to Danny Garcia and Angel, man. Yeah, I, I'm, even though I might roll with Spence this weekend, you know, it's just the <laughs> boxing part of it. I put the love to the side, but. Hey, shout out to them, man. Hey, Danny you know Garcia for everybody, man. He's a tough fighter, tremendous fighter. Yeah. He never turned down a fight. He's in every fight. I'm going Spence this weekend too, yeah, man. Spence just Spence just just as a just as a boxing fan watching that shit, being realistic. Good fight. Good fight. It's gonna be a great something fight. Something I look at the timing, because something does and something Alex reminded me yesterday. That Danny Garcia has great timing. That's true. It's not like Spence is a it's full of speed, no. I mean, it's gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a very good fight. You, you know, we're talking about we were talking about chins uh, just a little while ago. Shit, I mean, Spence got thrown out of a damn car. Yeah. So talk about a chin and just, right. you know, being able to just uh -huh. bounce back to hear the words that we're talking about, a man that was thrown out of a car in less than a year ago, and he's going to fight. I mean, you heard about the Vinny Pazienda story and how hard he worked. Spence just, uh, he had an angel on his side that night. Actually, not wearing a seatbelt saved his life. Yeah. Hey, you never know if that night, this Saturday, the yeah. injuries catch up to him. This is boxing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And, and Sparring and fighting, two different things. Exactly. You know, many people have said it. Uh, Snoop Dogg said it last week. And our guest two weeks ago, Ernesto Alamon, you don't play boxing. You can play uh, house. You can play Barbie dolls. You can play drinking, play dancing, but you don't play boxing. It's a one-on-one -on -one sport. I mean, again, it looked like a one-on-one -on -one sport, but it's a team effort. 
You right. need to have a team with you. Yeah. The corners win the fight sometimes. They guide you through the win. You know? We 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 see with two eyes. You got the corners that, you know? Yeah. So Yeah, we talked a little bit about that too, Shelly, uh, as far as the, the, the corner man. Um if you were to have your, your pick today and, and just pick the dream team and uh, um, I don't want to put just these two out there, so we'll put Buddy McGirt in there as well. Uh, you, you you got Freddie Roach, you you, you got a uh, Mikey Garcia, you got uh, Andre Ward's uh, corner man. Um, mm-hmm. Drawing a blank right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, you right. even got your boy. Who was, who was that? Virgil. Virgil, Virgil Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Virgil Hunter. Virgil, yeah. uh, your boy Stokes. Um, how important is that? And and when do you know he needs to play that role? When, when does does he read you like did, did your trainer read you and say okay we need to turn it up or did you read yourself and kind of look t- towards him and say when do i us fighters always know mm-hmm. what we think we know but yeah. really up to the experienced guy in the corner or the trainer to really turn it up for you um and then you got times where fighters a trainer going to take a fighter but so much yeah so far if they got to switch teams you see that a lot yeah and it's okay. great guy like canelo that stick with his team to the end it's rare yeah. you get those kind of people. Like Andre Ward with Virgil Hunter. Yeah. They've been around forever. Since his amateur. It's rare. So it comes to time in boxers' life. If you get to a certain level, it's time for you to change teams to better yourself off. You see, Top Rank does that a lot. And people complain about, ah, the Top Rank break your old team down and bring, bring new trainers involved. But that's just the the the, get a cement, the the growth of a fighter. It comes time for you to move and change. Hey, hey, you're now there. You get that bad rap. Now you're now right? You're, top yeah. Rank. Hey, they yeah. take, your, they take well, the team I, out of the... Hey, they take it to the next level. They're investors, so they want to make sure that invest uh, uh, comes to pass. If you know, um, I mean, look, look at Eminem. If he didn't have Dre busting them beats, I mean, it'd be difficult for him to cross over. I mean, the talent was there, right. but we'll put him over the top, <laughs> shall we? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, just like in your field, a, a videographer. I mean, um, you've been able to excel yourself, and you've watched all all these uh, directors, and you know the directors of, of the Creeds, the directors even of the Scarfaces, uh, and you know the, the big top movies, the Spielbergs, and and what have you. And like you said earlier, man, about building that team. And um, you know, I always say this a lot. Whenever they probably get sick of me saying it, but whenever I talk to anybody in the Garcias camp, you know, iron sharpens iron. It's who you surround yourself with. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good one. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron, brother. That's true. That's why I'm sitting next to you. That's why I'm the man. mic next to Shelly hey, and Cole. You need a bodyguard call me. You need a bodyguard for anybody yeah. call me, all right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, hey, you about to have me glued in my seat tomorrow. I'm about to be learning a lot <laughs> about it. I probably, I hey, so am I going to see wait. a little you running around in that film? Yeah, I, I believe I have a major piece in there. You've seen me a lot in in, in the in the doc. I haven't seen it, but... I heard well, your I've voice. Told, I've been in a bunch of... Yeah, my voice is in there a bunch of times. So, you know? we got, you know, we got these camera phones and stuff like this up. Uh, your dad being so flashy when he was younger, man. Did you guys have like video cameras around the house and stuff like that? He did. He lived. He okay. Lived yeah. So I wonder. It's got to be some <laughs> you know, some classic footage. My shit. Be, yeah. My, my family has that. He was before his time. Before the iPhone, the, the iWatch came out. Yeah. He said, make believe he's talking to the phone. He's a player. Wow. Oh, he was on some James oh, Bond. Before I came out. Yeah. 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 He, he was, he was James Bond. Captain Bob. Kirk stuff. We're talking the eighties. No, he was the type of person, you know, ahead of his time. Well, wow. he lo- I mean, he looked outside the box. He had been cre- doing these times. Oh, yeah. he had been going crazy. The cameras, social media. Oh, I loved it. He like, loved it. Yeah. So, so tell us. I mean, people must come to you like crazy, man. I mean, I was talking to Shelly along the way that somebody came up to you and they want to call him Macho Tacos. Well, what's the craziest thing proposal that that you had? And you're probably thinking, okay, uh, minus the money, this this thing, I'm not going to endorse this. Or hey, that's a good idea. I mean, because people, I mean, yesterday we talked and, and you got a call from somebody on the other side of the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are some about, of the proposals that are coming branding? away? I mean, I don't give it, not, let the count the hat, but I'm working outside the ring on branding, definitely the macho brand. Um, looking to touch the, the, the food tech industry. What, the guys, what I want to say is what's crazy when it's come your way where I'm saying, no, I'm cool uh, The latest that. one was macho condoms. Oh, hey, we'll do macho condoms. Uh, macho I mean, condoms? Okay, I can see that in okay. a way, yeah. <laughs> Be macho protector. So, so before see that. before it happens, you yell macho time. Bob and Weave, boy, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so before you, before it happens, you yell macho time. I don't know, but you know, I, I don't know. I thought about saying, eh, eh. you know, those kind of things. I I, wow. I kind of stick away from like yeah. alcohol and those kind of deals. You know, I don't I don't really touch. I have I have beautiful daughters. I don't want them. Yeah, is it might not my legacy is important for me, but my father left behind. I look at it as a blessing. So right. when I go, I want each other behind for my daughters. Yeah, that same light, that same legacy. Yeah. So that, that's, I'm, I'm careful what I, you know, what I touch. I, I just had to ask that because after tomorrow, Shelly, 
people who never got the chance to see Hector Macho Camacho live or, or you know, like a lot of people, they'll say LeBron James because they've never seen Michael Jordan right. uh, ever play. Right. And one thing I will say, and we'll touch about that, and, and Jordan uh, and how the impact he's made on your life, Shelly, I'm going to let you tell that story. Yeah. But he didn't have an a all-star team around him with the exception of, of the Olympics, but he represented our country. My, my, my point is, after tomorrow, that footage people are going to say, man, who was this guy? Yeah. I didn't know. So-and-so copied him or, oh, no one. A lot of questions are going to be answered. Oh, no wonder it was this way or that way. So the window that we, me and Alex talked about earlier, there's going to be a couple windows open, opening for you. When, when do you sit down and say, hey, these are the choices that, that I'm going to make? Because you know when that window of opportunity is there for you? Um, you, you got to cash in on that. When I say cash in, I don't mean yeah. money cash in. And, and I'm going to go deep on you right here. I'm going to drop this right here because I'm not going to hold my tongue on this. Even today with your dad in heaven, he still left something for you. And tomorrow when that movie drops, everything that comes with it is what he left you as if to say, look, son, you, you thought there wasn't nothing in the account. Boom. Yeah. This is it. All in, all in God's timing. You know what I mean? So Blessing. it's going to, it's going to drop. Blessing. It's, it's going to be there, man. And you know, just, I have to let you know because I felt that in my heart earlier when we were talking today and, and also, and I don't mean to steal the show, uh, uh, Shelly, jump in, but I mean, he just got me going about Hector, uh, about his father. When he was in the ring dancing, <clears throat> we were playing some salsa music. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember a story where we're in um, Las Vegas, Caesar's Palace, and uh, they, they took the, uh, the left hand wraps off, you know, they mm -hmm. turn them like this. Yeah. Well, the music is dropping and we know when we listen to music, okay, that my favorite part's gonna come on. So they're doing the right hand, right? They didn't do it quick enough, and he kind of tells them something. That's that right. music drops. He just boom. He just starts hitting it with that's the home. freaking the rest of the hand wrap still that's on. He home. didn't care because that's the favorite part. Get the hand wraps off. Right. You know what I mean? But you didn't get them off, so I'm still getting down. He has half a hand wrap still on his right hand. I his music that. would just drop. I seen it. Yeah. Hey man, I'm excited, man. Like I said, I, I told him earlier when he was uh, training, I was like, dude, I'm chilling, yeah. chilling with the lady, watching it. That's it. Yeah. Oh man, I just you know I. I, I can't wait. And uh, we talked about a, um, a sneak preview, but I, I thought about that. The selfish me thought about that, but I don't even want to rob from everybody else. I uh, want to sit there and when I'm watching it, everybody else is watching yep. it at the same time. When I'm feeling the goosebumps, they're feeling the goosebumps at the same time too. Yeah. So I'm going to sit back and, and watch it too. Love. Oh, it is love. love. It, it, it is love. And, you know, we appreciate you and we love you. We love what you're doing. And your legacy is, is beginning because this opportunity that, that uh, the Lord has given you and your dad, sky's the limit. Every single dream that you thought of, every single uh, desire of your heart that, that you ever wanted and, and, and wanted to happen, it's happening now, man. Just preparing myself. You know, I, I'm a Muslim. I stay in prayers. I stay giving thanks. You know, I saw that before I'm, I'm your really workout today. Of everything that's going on now. The hard work you put in the love yeah 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 you, you know uh, shell i i could just compare that too because i mean you're, you're very close to your father you're very close to you know you still call your grandpa papa and yeah you know that i mean so an impact on the love there and and you could only imagine you know and uh that, that loss that you turn to love. And I can openly speak about it. And if people say, my dude, you just keep going and keep going. Those of you that know my story, um, I know the pain of, of a loss and, and is why we're, we're doing today. So I, I can ask these questions and out of, out of respect. I look at your base and I, and I look at, at uh, your pictures and, and especially when you post with your daughter. Yeah. I mean, I, I see a different Shelly there. I see a, a smile that no beer can give you, no woman can give you, yeah, uh, no nothing can, can give you. And, and for uh, Hector just to continue to reflect today like it happened yesterday, because it, it, the sting, it never goes away. No. No. And, and when I speak for me, I don't mm. want it to go away. It's mine. I, I, I vibe off that. I, I survive off that. Yeah. No, it's interesting you say that because it's like I got this talent, you know, and I film for everybody. But um, <clears throat> just recently, man, I started filming my grandmother, right? I was like, Grandma, I want you, because she talks to me, we're so close. Um, so she started, uh, I started filming her, and she started telling our family stories, like our history. And that shit's hard for me, because every time I'm behind a camera, like I turn my head because I cry. Same thing with me. I cry, you know, because I know one day, like I, I'm, doing, I'm doing this for my family and for myself, mm -hmm. but I'm hearing her tell these stories about Mississippi yeah. or picking cotton or my grand, you know, my grandparents making $15 a week with seven kids. And I cry every time. So we're doing these little episodes. I'm like, okay, Grandma, this week we're going to talk about how you met Papa. And I just cry. Yeah. Because that voice is not going to always be here. And those yeah. things. And, I, and I'm creating these moments for my entire family. So it's just like, you know, we're on this topic. So 
for me, I have so much respect for you, so much love for you, not even knowing you just because of like the people I hold on to. Knowing tomorrow you're gonna sit back with people in the world, people like me that just met you, and like I'm gonna get brought into your life. Like you know? that's, that's gonna be late. Yeah, and a lot of people out there gonna be late as well. You know, it's yeah. But I, you know, I, I've shared with Alex, you're the closest thing. They say they. That's what they say. I that's mean, say. Your, 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 your look, your voice. Yeah. Even when I was watching you dance here in the ring, I was like, "Damn!" When me and him walked outside, yeah, I, was like, I was yeah, like, "He's he, a well, I see a lot of his dad." You know? That's what they tell me, man. You know, Apple don't fall far from the tree. People start coming like my mother, like my mother. But you know, my father would call me Bobby. He loved me, man. A much. It, it was you know genuine. Yeah. That's still yeah. man. Yeah. Um, when did he um, say, "Okay, son, we're gonna put everything into this boxing sport"? I mean, was any other sport introduced to you? Was any other option introduced to you? Or was it kind of, hey, son, you're going to fight? You know, I was raised in New York City. And in New York City, was crack cocaine neighborhood. I, I was raised yeah. in pissy hallways. So I couldn't go outside and play. Right. Because my grandma was worried. You come out, your son, they're going to kidnap you. They don't take you for hostage. <laughs> I, 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 I could even look out the window like that. and talk on the phone. Because you think They'll I'm calling the you. cops. The people are thinking I'm calling the cops. And them, it was a coke line. Yeah. Or a crack line. Yeah. Red top blue. I couldn't even talk out the window. So my family, to keep me out of trouble, they kept me in a boys club in New York. The boys club in New York at the school mm -hmm. program. That's why I learned baseball, basketball, football. When you come from New York City, so you got to learn how to play all sports. You got to learn how to play basketball. You got to learn how to play sports. That's what New York is. Yeah. And thanks to New York, that's that's mm -hmm. who I am because of New York. Uh, we always had leagues, basketball league, PL, baseball league, football leagues. And Stick that kept ball. me out of trouble. Stick boy, have a team right now. They stick boy. That kept me out of trouble, you know, staying out the gyms and I mean, staying out the streets, going to the boys' cup and everything. But what pushed box was my mother. When I moved to Orlando, Florida, 1992, after the Chavez fight, my father gave us a down payment. Not the whole body, he didn't buy the house for me. Yeah. He gave us a down payment here. Yeah. And we moved to Florida and um, I started meeting new friends and my mother said, you know what, Hector, you gotta do something. Take some kind of sports up. Let's go to the boxing gym. Yeah. You cannot be in the streets here doing nothing. Yeah. She put me in the boxing gym. The next day, she bought me the USA boxing book. And I remember looking at the boxing book, 139, I looked at the page. It was David Diaz, number one. I told my mother, Mom, yeah. I'll be number one soon. And just yeah. so happened, 1996, I became the number one fighter in the United States, in the nation. Um, I credit that to my mother, who really pushed me to box. It wasn't my father. My father had, oh, you know, if you want to fight, you can fight. He didn't care about that. My father always called me a sissy. You gonna be a, you gonna be a sissy because you was raised around four females. I was raised by my my two aunts, my yeah. mother, my you know, my grandmother. <laughs> so I, I came out proper compared to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. gonna be a little pussy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it. That, you know? yeah. uh, I have to prove myself. Always call yeah, me so pussy. Yeah. That's how it was. Call you a sissy? You be oh, a sissy. Old school oh, that's right there. Yeah, you yeah. raised around five. You gonna be a sissy? Come on. He used to purposely take me around girls. Hey, could Bobby touch her? Not crazy. <laughs> touch, 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 touch. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah. There's crazy things, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, it's, crazy, it's funny man. you say that because it's usually the mother that says, "No, I'm against boxing. I'm gonna have them play piano, or I'm gonna have them go to school, or do something yeah. else." But uh, your mother, because she knew the mm. streets mm. And, and she knew that they can suck you in, so she found you an avenue. Correct. Yes, my mother was in a gang coming up. And so was my father. My father left the gang and come going to boxing. So the wow. things people don't know. My mother was in a gang for years. And my yeah. mother, you know, shot and <clears> my mother lived the street life. So. My wow. father was who he was in New York City, which is, they loved him, but on the flip side, yeah, people hate him. Right. He was flashy, he was successful. That Jealous. was anywhere in life, even your own circle. You become successful, your closest friends start hating him. It's natural, you know, that's, that's normal. So. Was it genuine hate or was it half jealousy? A lot of jealousy, that's what it is, you know? A lot of jealousy, but that's just human nature. But speaking of that, did your, did you, could you key in, could your dad, was he picking up on that shit? Could he tell? My father was like, what? That's why I did the book Macho Dad. You know, my father was, it was something like, you know, he would come around, stop at my school every here and there. He would just additional father come, hey, son, let me see your homework. How you doing in school? No, no, no. He'd come around, see me with nice fancy cars and hang out for a little bit, drop me back off. I would see him on TV fighting. Wow, superhero. Then I want to see him again. I'll go to his fights in Las Vegas, Atlantic City. I lived a high class life. Then from there, go back to the projects. So, you know, I had the kind of, you know, shit, daddy, I have resentment coming up, you know? Right, and right. Damn, what the hell I'm doing here in the project? He fighting on HBO. I, I, I got tired of people calling me, oh, let's come out your son. It got to a point, my mother said, you know what? We moved from 112th Street, 2nd Avenue. When I was 14, we moved over to Madison Avenue. When we moved to that building, my mother said, listen, you gonna stop telling people your name is Hector? Tell your name is Luis Camacho. I don't want you saying you Camacho Jr. Or your, that's your father. Say your name is Luis Camacho. And that, that helped me start. That's when I found myself, who I was. At 14, so I told you my name is Luis Camacho. That's why I got to sports, basketball, football. I didn't have that pressure. Luis Camacho said, no, no, you know? So, that's what made me. Was there ever a time they said, hey, you're Camacho's son, and you said, um, 
you know no nah, a bunch of times yeah how tough was that for you in, in, in being that young to to understand her, her point because i got because bullied when i was young i was bullied a lot you come watch your son let's fight come on come on i just get bullied a lot yeah, let's fight you come out your son your father's a fight go in the ring with skirts i said they, they, they get on me man yeah. they just get at me every I can time see, oh, yeah, so see, it see, had yeah. his point and his cons the good thing everybody knew who the hell i was but those were open but the flip side of it come out your junior what are you doing here living in a project your father's on tv that ain't your father that's oh, your shit. father's whack. Oh, your father's a, a fag walking fighting with skirts. I just always get that. Right, and then they ain't always. Got, yeah, fuck. So it, it, mm. it has pulling has cons. Mm. It was a bad part. Damn, mm. I drew resentment because of that afterwards. I didn't want to know about my father. That's why my, my professional career, I didn't use my father with me. I want to I want to be me. And now that he's gone, man, I wish I had him on me. I wish. I wish. Say, saying that. I wish he's true. Yeah. I, yeah. I wish. Yeah. Like yeah. he's gone, I wish. Where would I be right now if he was with me, training me? Where? Would you was it would that be the one thing you'd do different as yeah. as men that relationship? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. He tried. He tried a couple of times, but I, I didn't want to be around. Like, you know? Hey, come come training camp with me. No, I'm all right. His way of life was different minds. You know, I was raised different. Right. Uh, he was too wild for he was too wild for me. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no limits. You, you find know? you find that I had uh, limits. You find like your your mom was protecting you from that too? My family protected me. My mother, you know, she she did a great job. But my grandmother played a big part. My my two aunts, John and Marixa. When you say grandmother, is that is that your your my, uh, my daddy's mother's, mama? My mother's mother, Lou Sanchez. Uh, that's my mm -hmm. heart. Okay. And I also had two aunts. Both of them, one of one school abroad, went to Europe on the school. Okay. The other one well educated. So they kept me in line. Yeah. I'm thankful for them. Because if not, I would have been, you know, he said, a he ghetto said, child. He said I'd be Camacho Jr. if it yeah, wasn't be, for them. Yeah, I'd be, be, be Camacho. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, yesterday I had a Camacho moment that actually reminded me yesterday. He said, that's a Camacho moment right there. Remember <laughs> yesterday, phone broke up yesterday? That yeah. Was, you know, hanged up? Yeah. We were, I explained to what happened afterwards. But, you yeah, know, no, it, no, it's no, a Camacho no, moment. I, I, I understand. <laughs> uh, you know, lo lo looking back on, on your father's side, was it your grandpa or your grandma or your or your auntie or 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 your your Nino anybody there your uncle? Where did Hector get that from? That flamboyancy, that energy, that spark? I mean, he had to get it from somebody. I was say it he's his, you know? identical to Maria Camacho, my grandmother. They the same people. Okay. The same, okay. So the same that's energy. That's the same yeah. So that's nature. Then it's a yeah. yeah. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's in him. Nurture. Yeah. Go. Nurture. Right. Yeah. Created yeah. who he was. He loved Batman. He loved Cato. He loved Bruce Lee. Okay. So I he used to watch Bruce. Then he came to martial arts. He became black yeah. belt because karate. But he loved that type of guy personality. I got you. I seen it. You yeah. Know, he, he took that from I was Bruce. online. They were, they were showing like his journal and stuff. And then stuff he he wrote. He was exactly. like, I'm, he was like, no, I'm living the dream. I am the dream. Like yeah. he, he was doing like reassuring himself of who he was yeah. in his words. And I respected that so much. That was something that when he passed, I questioned, was he lonely? Do you have doubts? I mean, those are, you know, who knows? Interesting. You, know? you see him outside of the ring, you see him happy, but when he's alone, who knows what he's going through? Maybe he, maybe he took refuge in drugs to help him get away from everything? I mean, you know, you, right. you know those, those are questions that I still have that I need to be answered. You know, he's not here to answer those questions, but, you know, you know looking at his life, like, you know, wow, I remember times he was alone and I want to be alone. He want to be left alone. You want to go out? He got to a point that he didn't want to go outside no more. He's like, I'm staying home. He's just, Talk to something in the room, he wouldn't come out. Well, I don't know, was, was he empty inside? You know, once you gain everything in the world, you have everything you want in the world. What else more would you want? What, did he have everything in the did he have everything in the world that he I wanted? Mean, anywhere he go, they always throw the red carpet from. Anywhere. Red carpet. Everywhere. Free room, free hotel. You know, when you become somebody, everything become free. Free food. I paid let me pay your food, my trip. Everything comes free to you. So that's just a, a perk of being, you know, who you are, being famous. But um he had everything you, mm. that anybody wanted. The fame he had. Charisma he had, the love he had, you know, good looking guy. Yeah, we were, we're, we were just talking about the that. End, like he was lonely, like an emptiness. Like I felt it around him, you know. He was always quiet. Poppy, come on, come spend time with me. You know, those kind of things, like, you know, wow. Is that what the uh, the boxing world does? Uh, Miguel Cotto said a quote, and, and it's one of the famous quotes. He's there, and, and uh, after his, his last fight, it was a loss, and, and his wife is telling him something, and he says, This is all that I know. It's boxing. This. This is all that I know. Could, could it be? I, I don't know. I, I I don't even want to insinuate, but I'm just I'm thinking from oh, yeah. from afar. Um, you know, because because the boxing, because being announced, being who you are, it's it's no longer there inside of the ring. You know what? That's interesting. That could be also a part. You know, we used to be prima donnas, taken care of. 
you the man. How good? How good? How good was it? Your bag, how good? How good was it? Oh, I love it. I love that. I would not. Give me an example. I Give me an example. Nothing, huh? Give me an example. When you guys walked in a restaurant or a hotel or just oh, a store man, or, man. or, or the comes mall. Around, come on, show my I mean, it was love. Let me get a picture. It was love, man. Come on, you want to eat? Come sit down here. Come on. You know, it was love. Man. You want to eat? Try this. You know, it was love, man. You know, and I appreciate it, but at, at times I was I didn't like that feeling. Okay. It's fake. It's not yeah. genuine. Okay. It's smoking screens. You know, it's cool now. But let's see what Camacho's finished. He's done. He got no more money. See, it would be the same love. Yeah. Not the same love. Yeah, there you go. So I knew. There, there you go. And Smoke and screen. It'll be gone yeah, soon. There, there you go. And, um, you know, that was my point earlier. Like I said, and those that loved him and thought, forgot about him or didn't know him after tomorrow they're going to appreciate even more and it's going to be like brand new to them they're going to say oh i remember that or i was there for that Uh, i grew up doing doing this or or watching uh macho even even some who close friends of his who turn their back on him oh camacho got problems he got drug problems i don't want to be with him those people count them out they're going to feel it now when they see this well how great he was as a person how great he was as an athlete what he meant to people how he changed lives yeah can we quick to point out the wrong of somebody but do they really point out the good? Like, you know, that's something that, you yeah. know. So is it, um, tomorrow, uh, you know, just telling the fans, the people that are going to tune in, can we expect like a, an honest depiction of your father with the work that was done? Um, Yeah. I mean, you're going you're gonna to see what's honest in the director's mind. I okay. Mean, that's just I the director's it. Yeah, point of view. Everybody power. have their own vision of what it is. I mean, I know who Macho Man is, you know. Yeah, I know yeah. who he is for myself. But everybody have their own own view of who macho is and i just hope everybody could have a good one a good okay, memory of him. i got you like who he was you know i'm not biased i mean that's that's everybody got their own opinion who macho man is yeah i i i believe i i put the project in the right hands of every draft to do this and let's talk about that whose hands did you put it into and how tough of a decision was it to find the right producer director and and the person that you can trust because like i said you've had people with different proposals yeah. coming at you left and right yeah. even as we speak now yeah and my, my father passed away i was getting calls probably two months after he passed away by doing project with my father i wasn't ready like you know what yeah i'm not not yet man no, i'm still hurting i'm still grieving not yet and i turned out a lot of i turned out a lot of a lot of opportunities a lot of money yeah. i turned down because i didn't want it's, it's not a money grab it's a legacy. Yeah. It's not a one time you get the money. No. Yeah. This will open other doors. Yeah. I want to make sure I do this right. Not for me, for him. Yeah. For my brothers. For my family. Yeah. Who hold Camacho on their chest. I want to make sure it's for them. It's for us. So I, I want to make this right. I didn't want to make because of the money. I mean, I for money, I would have been in the movie. I would have been made the project. But no. It has to be done right. And I, I, I let every draft. I passed to every draft. Every draft was a guy that was into boxing. He was part of the New Contenders, was a, was a promotion company who did the Duran fight, who did the, the Leonard fight, and he knew my father well. He was a boxing person. He worked hand in hand with Mike Akeley, my father promoter. So, yeah. so Eric knew my father. So, you know what? I trust Eric to put it in his hands. Eric did documentary of, of, of Noriega from Panama. He did some yeah. deep documentary that I've seen. I said, wow, yeah. he did a good job. Just the guy. So, you know, good. I believe I put it in the right hands. That's good. How deep did he dig? I mean, what was oh, the research man. like? I mean, let's talk about the film a little bit because we are endorsing it. And, and, and why Showtime? I mean, why not in movie theaters or why not HBO or uh-huh. or, or why not uh, pay-per-view, Netflix? Uh-huh. And wh- right. Why Showtime? And, and how dig, how deep did he dig? I mean, my man dig deep. Everyone's going to call me. Hey, much I'm going, to, I'm going to Puerto Rico. Can you join me, please? I need to go inside a precinct. I ain't going to please the party to talk to somebody. They want to talk to me. They need you there. Yeah. As a fly, Puerto Rico, as a captain. He was digging, man. He was calling me up with my investigation, things that you heard. I said, wow, I never heard that. He even he even visited the family of the person that died with my father. The guy who got shot oh, with my wow. father. He yeah. ever went that far and interviewed his family, the mother, the sons. Like, wow, you digging deep. Yeah, I'm digging deep. He wanted to solve this mystery. Ever really tried to solve this mystery, and, and he didn't get too far in my father's case, so he changed the the way of the doc to another yeah. way. He called me up, Camacho, I'm gonna change the look of the doc. I said, God, do what you gotta do. But he dig deep, man. It, it was a lot of work. It took us two years to put this together. Nice. So we, uh, we're showtime tomorrow at 9 p.m.? 9 p.m. Pacific time. Oh, another reason why, you know, the COVID, why we can't be outside, because we do a Macho Camacho yeah. movie in the theaters, we gotta shut down the city. We gotta show the city. We gotta show right. New York. We gotta show Puerto Rico. And under this COVID, we can't do that. That's you know? true. So. Studio is the best way to go now. That's it, yeah. <laughs> in a bubble. Hey, I'm tuned in. So I'm ready. series, Netflix. 
novelas. That's the <laughs> avenues we're looking at. You know? There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, you know, I want to take this time. I want to thank um, uh, Frank Alamon um, uh, for opening up his his gym here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. Uh, you know, I just have this feeling that we'll be back here at this gym to do yeah. some. Um, I've talked to him um, about shooting some live shows here. And uh, I basically said that, um, which I won't say it on the air. We're going to take care of his gym as far as media, getting sound bites from some of the fighters. And uh, the, we always say, whenever I go to Garcia's or, or, or to uh, Wildcard, I always say the who's who's walks into that gym. You never know who's going to walk in that gym. And uh, I, I want to bring some, um, some recognition to some of the fighters and some of the hard work that is taking place in that gym. And there's no better way to do it by just getting off your ass and coming down here and interviewing some of the kids and seeing what 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 drives them the future Camachos the future Chavez's and the future Jose Ramirez's so I want to thank uh, uh, Alamon and uh, opening up his gym and, and allowing us to shoot this um, this podcast here and uh, if you got anything else to to drop Hector I want to give thanks to my sponsors you know um, Mongoose Water named after late great Archie Moore the old Mongoose that's right um, Kitchen App for keep my diet and my <laughs> everything in order. I want to let people know I also got the Going Up Camacho, the Life of Hector Camacho Jr. coming out soon. Got a docu series coming out, yeah. 13 episodes, 2021. So we're we'll okay. working, we're staying busy. And be ready for the, for the comeback. It's still macho time. Let's it see. is. It yeah. is. What you got for us, Shelly? Hey, man, I'm good, dude. I might, I shit, I'm my Friday night set up right now. <laughs> All right, man. You know what? Hey, everything, uh, we appreciate that. And as always, hey, it's a wrap here at Fresno, California. Thumbs up for Richie. This is ring announcer Lupe Contreras. Voice of top rank boxing and of La Jaula for Combate Americas. And you are listening to the Fighter's Voice. As always, thumbs up for Richie.